He may be a newcomer to Victorian sports fans, but he's having a great year. We caught up with Francis Habib to talk about his impressive VZ Commodore. I had an unfortunate accident with a previous car that I had. It, it, it caught fire and um, as a result, a guy out of the blue said, look, I've got this car. Are you interested in buying? Yeah. And I had a look at it. it. It didn't look anything like this. Yeah. Um, it was black and it just didn't, it wasn't well maintained, whatever. But I bought it and I, when I found out the history, I thought, yeah, okay. So it was built for Jason Richards back in um, 2004. Mm-hmm. And he ran it from July that year for, for six months and then Jamie Winkup took it the following year. Yeah. So considering that, I mean it hasn't won any Bathurst, it hasn't won any major races. The best it did, uh, believe it or not, was a fourth at Shanghai of all places in China. So, um, But yeah, I, I loved the car and the fact that Jason Richards had had it and Jamie Winkup being you know, a six, seven time champion, I can't remember how many times he's won it, I thought it'd be a good car to hold on to. And as you can see, you know, I sort of restored it back to mechanically, both mechanically and, and livery wise, back to the way it was. Yep. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's my first full year of racing yep. ever. So um, considering that, I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not too bad. I'm learning as I go. Every single day that I come out, yeah. learn something different. So, yeah. The plan is to finish well. Yep. I'm pretty confident that I'll finish second. Yep. Very doubtful I'll finish first because Dean Cam is that far ahead. Yeah. Um, but you never know, you know, you sort of, we'll see what happens. But um, second's pretty good for, for my first time out, so I'm pretty happy with that, yeah. yeah. Although, look, I've got to give credit to the car. Yeah. You know, I'll, as I said, I'm developing, but having a car like that behind you will help a lot as well, obviously, so. I want to thank Dean Lilly there, who's my um, engineer, as well as a data guy, as well as a mentor. Like, he taught, he teaches me, because he's not only an engineer, but he also knows how to drive. Yeah. So having both those, um, you know, attributes, uh, obviously helps um, and his boys Andrew Elton Aaron um, and then uh, Andrew Newton from Ra- uh, from uh, Newton Motorsports for helping with the gearboxes he's very good with the gearboxes and diffs um, and uh, and my family for letting me do this so <laughs> yeah yeah giving me this the, the time and space but you know it's give and take so I give back a bit too <laughs> So we're ready to go for the first race of the weekend for the QP Lubes Victorian Sports Dance Championship with the National Sports Dance, thanks to DA Performance. Here's our starting grid. Joining me, Gary O'Brien, is Tony Riccadello, Jordan Caruso leading the way, Gary. Yes, yeah, Steve Tomasi back on home turf. Chance Talbot, uh, the Victorian, who uh, ex- basically exclusively in Victoria. Colin Smith, Fianto Centre. Graham Gilliland there as well. Andrew Parker, Gary Ford towards the back of the field. Andrew Reid and... At the back. And on the warm-up lap, you can see here coming out of the pit lane, Chas Talbot just losing the rear. Uh, they say diff issues with that car. Saw him just spin into the wall, so not a great start to the weekend for him. But we got things underway, a big field, 23 cars getting out there in the end. And the race is on down to turn one in front of this huge pack of fans here for the historic sports fans. Yeah, big move coming from back down the field too as they sort themselves on this. The opening lap, Michael Robertson on board here. Bell Real Estate, Monaro chases them through and there's our race leader Tony Riccadello, Jordan Russo, Steve Tomasi the next one through. What a good field card, Beryl Chetton from New South Wales in there for the Monaro. Queensland, uh, Colin Smith there further back and then we go right back to the back of the field as the last guy heads up the back straight. Yeah, Hume bearing up the tail there, Alex Williams we swing around with here in this mental RX-7. 20B turbo powered and he was sticking with the big guns in the early stages. Good to see after they've spent so much time developing this car. Only doing select rounds in 2019 but you can see there Ricky Dello, Caruso, Tomasi and Williams right behind. Dean Lilly actually got himself right up in the early stages as well. He's seen a bit pace in the line. Yeah, tarmac rally car of all things and conditions probably soon. I think you'll find there that, oh, big moment Huge. there for Tony Riccadello down at turn one. Manages it to get together. Look at this. <laughs> That's as big a slide as you get. On board with Caruso for the replay. He just locks the front, loses the rear, holds onto it though. Early stages, cold tyres. As we see now, Graham Gilliland putting pressure on Daniel Timewell. This is the Victorian Sports Dance contingent mid pack as well. And Colin Smith coming back through. He didn't have the best start to the weekend and dropped down the order in the early stages. Yeah, another shot from Gilliland as he chases uh, HSV down into that back corner. Yeah. You know, to see that there's a uh, Tourista Martin Tirada out there with Jim Palacena at the world as well. 
Jim is doing a good job up inside the top 10. As you can see now, uh, Graham Gill is starting to run under pressure from Vin Stenter. Graham, uh, Colin Smith, sorry, starting to make his way through as well. Stenter looking to get his way past uh, Gilliland to pick up a few of those points in that championship battle. The all important championship battle between those guys, which will go down to the wire at Phillip Island. But at the front, you can see, didn't know where to look in these stages. Caruso to the inside of Ricky Dolo for the lead of the race. A lap after sliding through, he loses the position and now Ricky Adello with a lot of work to do. Well, it's very important for Caruso to try and win this. If he's got any chance at all, he has to win all three races here this weekend. And we see Williams got past Tomasi at the same stage. So he's really come on gangbusters. Great to see something other than a V8 up there. And even though I'm a V8 man through and through, I'd love to see a bit more competition come from different types of uh, engine and car configurations. This is absolutely great to see. And we will also see in the 2020 weather uh, Williams can keep that role running. If we take a look back at this battle again, Gilliland losing position to Smith, who's managed to get himself past Stenter as well. So Smith working his way through as we expected. Gilliland went out on wet tyres, we believe, in this race. And as it started to dry up, he has just sort of probably lost some of the pace he expected to have. Yeah, well, it's always tricky, to, particularly at Sandown, to pick Melbourne weather. That's <laughs> not what. <laughs> but he disperses to that and you can see he's chasing uh, the wet weather or the rain that's on the track somewhere to try and cool those tyres off. As Daniel Timewell loses the position there and Stenter gets past Gilliland as well. So Timewell has to settle in position behind uh, Smith now. He'll try to get his head down and work away. And we can just see here the leader of the Victorian contingent, Dean Cam. He's got Michael Robinson up behind him as well in the Bell Real Estate Monaro. This car always comes on song towards the end of the season, it seems. He gets ready for Isle of Magic. That's the main focus for Robinson most years, it seems. Yeah, and Williams now putting pressure on uh, Ricky Dello, who would have thought that uh, he would be under the pump from Alex Williams in this event and have no answer no. for Jordan Caruso out in front. Caruso has just got his head down and charged the way out in front in the DEA performance national sports stands. You can just see there, checkered flag waves. I think they missed Caruso as he came across the line, but he is still classed as the winner as we come down through the back section of the circuit with some of these other uh, Victorian sports stands cars. That's Graham Hume there in the Toyota and Daniel Timewell just flashing through shot as well. You can see Graham Gilliland and then behind him the 60 car of Andrew Brown, who made up a fair few positions. We saw him starting right down the back of the field for this race. Winners across the line, Jordan Caruso, Tony Riccadello, Alex Williams in third seat to Marcy, Dean Cam in fifth spot, Michael Robinson keeping his uh, round hopes alive. We'll be back after the break with more Victorian sports dance action, thanks to KP Lubes. Another newcomer to Victorian sports events is Daniel Timewell. He's built his own Commodore and gone racing. Yeah, so this season's going really well for us. The car's uh, been very reliable and hasn't caused us too much grief. Um, we're only in our second year of car racing, so um, so far so good. Yeah, we've been developing it, and yeah, it is, it is enjoyable. Um, I raced boats for all ski racing for 20 years, so um, it's, it's been a learning curve to, to swap from boats to cars, but it's been great, and I've really enjoyed the challenge. Um, look, I'm, I'm never going to beat the top guys, but as long as I just stay consistent and reliable and we keep having fun, we keep improving the car, that's all I can ask for. So the car's a 2015 SSV Redline, that's what it started life as. Um, we bought it as a stat write-off, um, wasn't very badly damaged at all really. Um, we stripped it back to a bare shell and started the build from there. The build process took eight months. Um, that was, you know, working nights and weekends on it. And so far so good, every, every change we make we keep moving the car forward. Our team is great, my son Jacob Timewell, uh, Will Toth helps out. Um, my better half, Tara DeVink, puts up with a lot of it, and our sponsors, of course, Prestige Chino, uh, PK Refrigerated Logistics, and STR Truck Bodies. You know, we couldn't do what we do without them. Good to hear the insights there from Daniel Timewell about how you can build a car and come out sports stands racing and be up there at the front. Going now into race two, the guys are getting ready. Jordan Caruso starting from pole after that fantastic first race victory. Yeah, Tony Riccadillo alongside. This is the finishing order from race one and being progressive and rolling starts. This is how we roll into the second of three races this weekend. A little bit drier for the start of this race as we can see Jonathan Lawson, Andrew Parker and Noel Gamble down the back end of the field. 
little bit dry, but there was rain overnight, so it'll be slippery offline as we charge down towards turn one yet again. You can see Beryl chatting to the inside of Dean Cam. He's making moves in the early stages. Alex Williams looks to the inside as well. He's going to go deep under brakes all the way to the lead, Gary. Wow. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> <laughs> it's well and truly off. Yeah, Beryl Chetton taking to the uh, the boonies as well. The Caruso lead, Fricanello second, Chip Polisina up the third, then Dean Cam, Colin Smith following through, and we've got two cars stuck down at turn one. Let's hope they can get them going again and see, here we go, you know, on board, this will give us a better idea what's happened here. Jordan Caruso sees Alex Williams go sliding across the front. You can see Alex got there, but didn't quite be able to pull it up. Beryl Chetton just slides down the inside as well, and oh, unfortunate contact with Tomasi on the way back through. Here's Graham Gilliland, so trouble further back in the field as well as he tried to get down the inside of Daniel Timewell. It was all on, <laughs> and there's Caruso sliding it out of the final corner. He's no doubt feeling the pressure as we go further back and see Jim Polisina under pressure from Dean Camp and Colin Smith as well. Oh, look at this. Here we Caruso, go. Caruso, Riccadillo side by side. Oh. oh, a bit of a break up, lock up from our champion elect, I guess you'd say. He only needs to keep getting points. He doesn't have to win. Caruso does. Caruso's going to make his best efforts to stay out in front. I was going to say, I think all he needs to do is finish this one to be an 11-time champion now. And there's a spin for the King George Tavern car. Unfortunately, on the outside of turn one rotates, and you can see how long it's taking to fire as Chetton returns to the pit lane. So obvious damage to that car. And there is the Tomasi car being wheeled back into the garage as well. The guys are already feverishly trying to work on it as we go on board with Graham Gillian. It's very slippery out there, and he uses the new runoff straight across the dirt down to Dandenong Road. Yeah, that could have been nasty on the old configuration. And then we've just seen Michael Robertson pass by Jim Polisena down the back straight. Of course, no match for a sports sedan in this touring car master's car. Uh, I guess you could say it's a sports sedan, a retro sports sedan, but certainly not the grunt of a space train car that's just not Still very cool to see you out there when we go back on board with Michael Robinson in the Bell Real Estate car. He's trying to chase down these guys. Colin Smith, of course, in uh, his Patrick Monaro sports sedan, and Dean Cam just in front of them leading the QP Lubes Victorian sports sedan's contingent. He's uh, leading the championship at the moment as it stands as well, with one round remaining. As long as he has a decent round here, Dean Cam splitting his time as well between Formula 5000 this weekend. Yeah, indeed, and uh, it's good to see uh, interstaters come and face off against each other. You don't know where you really sit until you're racing against people from other states. Look, it gets negotiating lap traffic as Riccadello puts the pressure on Caruso to try and find a way past. Caruso absorbing the pressure and also working on working through the lap traffic here. There's so many cars, there's different classes of course in Victorian sports stands. You can see them go past John Lawson. Now Lawson has won the 50k plate on previous occasions in the wet. Just goes to show in the dry, look how quick these guys are. They thread the needle into turn one. Brilliant driving from the pair of them and Riccadello is throwing everything he can at Caruso. This is a... Uh, oh, oh, no! Caruso. Had to come to an end at some stage. The pressure told. Russo off the track at turn three. Turn two to turn three. And Riccadello says, thank you very much. I'm through and on my way. There's the green light. He launches it through two. And, oh, no. Durban again. <laughs> Durban. In trouble. Facing the wrong way. So he obviously slid through just behind those guys because they just passed him down into turns one and two as we see the Ravage Raceworks prep cars together. Francois Habib second in the championship for Victorian sports fans in the Dodo car, the ex Jason Richards and Jamie Wincup car, which we heard about earlier in the show. And he's managed to get past Dean Lilly and continues working his way forward, picking up those valuable championship points. Yeah, Lilly be relying pretty much on wet weather with that four wheel drive GTO at the moment. Look at LA leads the way as they come around to complete another lap. Yeah, I don't think Caruso will be able to do anything about it in these late stages. We see Michael Robinson on board there, passing Parker in the Sentinel fire car. Dean Cam continues to lead the way in the Victorian Small Stands Championship. And, oh, Colin Smith's gone straight ahead at two, so it's treacherous down there. Take a look at the replay here and just lose the rear going. Yeah, he just uh, then fired him off on two drivers right. Pulls it back out, manages to get going. Oh, no. and Habib 
also has a drama down there and uh, that uh, resolves that little dice that's happened with the guy that preps the scar for him in yeah, Team Lily. And you can see here they're going past Shane Woodman on the final lap here, Ricky Dello. He's cleared out on Caruso with two laps to go. But Shane Woodman, a great effort by the Riverside Racing guys to get the Land of Science car back out there. That is important for the national championship points, of course, the final round for them this weekend. So very, very important for them. And I think Shane Woodman actually got himself back up just into 11th place, just outside the top 10. A great drive. So you see Lawson now all in the clutches of Robinson, who's been having a good race meeting. Michael Robinson trying to chase down this man for the QP Loops. Points this weekend. Dean Gamp leads the Victorian contingent home. Yeah, that's a great check the flag there. It's Tony Riccadello who won from Caruso in second, Camford, Michael Robinson, Chip Polisena up the fifth ahead of Dean Lilly, Alex Williams, seventh position. Securing an unprecedented 11th title, Tony Riccadello has been the man to beat for so many seasons. We caught up with him to get his thoughts about racing in sports fans. Yeah, look, it's probably been one of our tough, toughest years. Um, you know, from, from early in the year, we had a few issues engine-wise, and even before this weekend, um, on the Wednesday, we found out we had a couple of other engine issues. So, um, look, it's, it's a relief after that last race. We needed one extra point to um, win our 11th championship, so pretty happy with it, pretty yeah, proud. Right. It's, you know, pretty much we are getting faster as well, and, you know, lap records are getting broken, broken every, every time we go out, whether it's us or Caruso or whatever. So the category is always improving, but it's good to get some young guys in there. And, you know, I was young one, one day uh, <laughs> early, early on, and uh, I'm 40 this year, so it's yeah. been 23 years of, of run of sports at Ands, and... Um, Mate, still enjoying it, still get fired up, so it's uh, it's a great way to sort of fin finish the, w the year off and um, yeah, see how we go. They're all got their own sort of driving styles and aggressions, and you know you got Hossack. We've had massive massive battles over the years. Perkins probably not as much, you know, because he, he had a good car and we had a few uh, reliability issues and vice versa. And and then you got the young Tomasis and Randalls and and Caruso now and. Um, you know, even early on, Des Wall back in the day, and um, you know, Kerry Bailey, and they're all just different, different uh, challenges. And um, you know, we're still going, and still got the old girl going, and um, you know, still smashing it. Yeah, look, I mean, um, over the years we've had a lot of, lot of support. Um, you know, over here we've got Les Small and Benny Grass over, over this weekend's been helping out um, heaps, and then we've got the guys back in Perth, Baker, Glenn Baker, and. Um, you know, Robbie Mitchell earlier on and Paul Roberts and Colin Riccadello and my dad and you know like there's, there's guys, Jamie Gard, um, yeah, everyone's put in their own little idea and it's just a matter of putting the package together and you know we're, we're, we're going really well so um, but you know everyone's, everyone keeps saying she's old, she's old, she's old but hey <laughs> it's still at the front isn't it so mate um, yeah really happy with it and um, the old girl um, has had a lot of drivers over the years too, the, um, the, the truck's been you know, we've had uh, Ron Flynn, you know, um, Fred Show, and this weekend we've got Frank, and, and they've all put in and made the truck get to where it needs to be. And you know, no matter what um, issues we've had with the with travel, it's always got there on time. So um, you know, everyone's put their little little effort in, and um, the big results happen. Okay. Yeah, look, I mean, um, you know, obviously we've got all the guys at the workshop, being in Riccadillo Motors, um, Bendigo Bank. Um, you know, over the years we've had, you know, we've got Perth, Perth Car Wash, um, Perth Car Spa, and look, there's too many, to, yeah. too many to thank, but, you know, everyone who else, everyone who's put in um, and helped out over the years, um, mate, big thanks, and, you know, it's always always a big a big effort and a team effort, so, um, yeah, no, thanks. Good chat there with Tony Riccadillo, Ben Grice in the background. <laughs> he, I guess he didn't realise what he's up to. He had to lend his helmet because Tony's was out of date, and... Uh, sort of helped him in one way or other to win the championship or attempt to win the championship. There's our grid for this the third and final race for the weekend and it's the starting order from the finishing order of the race previously held. Yeah, you can see Stephen Tomasi and Bill Chatton right down the field and just look at this crowd. They've all come to the edge of the grandstand here for this final race of the weekend for the Victorian Sports Dance Championship proudly brought to you by QP Ludes. Out in front, Tony Riccadello, this time he's going to lead down into turn one. He takes the line away from Caruso. Jordan, uh, Dean Camp sitting in third place. Michael Robinson trying to go around the outside in fourth. He's going to lose out very, very wide there. It's slippery on the outside. 
and then Francois Habib also going wide and you've got to watch down the field because Beryl Chatton and Steve Tomasi will be coming through. They will and uh, interesting to see some of the cars that are up the front we wouldn't even expect them to be where they were and a bit of drama going on down the back of the field that's pretty normal when it's fairly congested and that uh, skyline and the drama there as well. Ashley McClurkin getting back out after a few dramas earlier on. He was pulling uh, bits of uh, spark plug out of the engine at one point here. As you can see now, Steve Tomasi around the outside. Wow. Real Chetton. They're powering past cars that are pretty quick in their own right. That was Graham Gilliland in the Rotary RX-7. That's not a slow car in a straight line. No slouch at all. And they're already up inside the top 10 things. Well, he's uh, up behind uh, Beryl Chetton. Who's the uh, New South Wales champion not that long ago? So, and a national, and national champion. champion yeah. The straight line performance from the Philippe Rochev is something to behold. It's probably the fastest car in the nation as far as straight line performance goes. They've already passed Daniel Timewell as well as they come onto the main straight for completing the first lap. So, work their way through the Victorian contingent. Francois Habib just in front there, as we see now. Daniel Timewell have to try to focus behind and make sure you can keep Graham Gilliland behind. They're sitting fourth and fifth out of the Victorian contingent at the moment. Here we go, Bill Chen to the inside of Francois Habib. Decides to pull out of it, just let the Dodo car go for the moment. As a bit of a lock up there for Tomasi as well into turn one. But uh, two, he's sorry. trying fairly hard now. Get a few of them going up the back straight. You'll see whether uh, Tomasi is able to pull him in with the uh, cross some of the other action as well, the Escorts, there's a few of them out there and running this weekend. Yep. Uh, it's a Gary Ford car coming into picture there, Andrew Brown having a lock up in the Trans Am uh, Camaro in behind him at the same time. Kenny House just in behind them as well, looking for a few good runs in the centre line car, the Datsun's up on the hill watching the Calibra and the Camaro make their way through the field there trying to chase down these guys. Dean Cam and Mike Robinson who are rounding up Jim Polizina. He just does not quite have the straight line speed he's, in that terrain. He's not far off though, is no, he? It's, it's, it's right taking there. all their efforts yeah. to get past him and quite commendable. Uh, Dean Lilly preps that car, so he's doing a fairly good job. But it's really on in the Vic stakes as well as nationally, I guess you'd say, mm -hmm. between Cam and Robertson there. Stenta trying to chase down Daniel Timewell and just behind him, Graham Gilliland. Gilliland probably hasn't shown the pace we expected as Brown wraps him up around the outside. So maybe there is a drama with the Gilliland car because it's not quite as fast as you're used to seeing here with the Victorian sports dance. Brown has got past him. Stenta is working his way away. And this man, Daniel Timewell, has been able to pull away well and truly after those two were close together uh, through the rest of the weekend. Very close at the start of turn two. We just saw the damage on the side of the car from where Gillian made contact. Oh, Russo off at turn six. That's 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 probably uh, damaged him somewhat. Just, uh, yeah, nowhere oh. to go. Just caught the lap traffic too quickly at the wrong part of the circuit. The traffic doing the right thing. They're all staying on their lines. This is what you want to do, but unfortunately, oh, Robinson Russo have a brake lock up here in turn nine, but manages to keep it on the road and uh, Tomasi's actually uh, hasn't been quite as quick as I expect him to be because he yet to get past uh, Chetton in the Camaro. I think he's using Chetton as a bit of a uh, battering ram here just to <laughs> Chetton can oh, deal with the traffic first hard. off. He was, oh no Lawson's in the wall what's happened there oh huge moment for Lawson down at Dandenong Road so he's come off the road here it is, it's just another replay. You can see all four wheels off the ground and smacks into the tyre bundle there. So that's not great for Lawson. That's brought out the yellow flag, actually, and we're hearing they're going to end this race prematurely because they need to do recovery on that car. As to here we go, Ricky Dello has seen the flag, seen the safety car boards. The checkered flag is out as well, and he's going to lead them home for the final race victory here this weekend at Sandown as we take a look at the race results. Tony Riccadello, Jordan Caruso, Alex Williams, Dean Cam, Michael Robinson rounding out your top five for a great weekend from the QP Loops Victorian Sports Sedans here on Blendline TV. Yeah, look, it was, um, you know, it was a, good, a good way to finish, I guess, uh, in front. Obviously, there's a safety car at the end on the last lap, but uh, hopefully the, uh, he's all right with that little accident. I think he might have just got shaken up down the back straight there and uh, ended up in the fence. So, but look, good way to finish the weekend and the year. Uh, looking forward to 
having a bit of a rest and um, catching up with some friends tonight um, for the presentation. And yeah, no, looking looking good. Really happy with it. Yeah, so 11th championship. Um, yeah, it hasn't really sunk in yet. I think because we've been so busy in the lead up and you know during the meeting. So yeah, no, it's pretty big thing. Um, probably one of the toughest ones that we've had to win. And um, you know, it's good to have all the young blood coming through trying to fight for the title. So it's good. Uh, look, I've um, got to just thank the parents, um, Carla, the kids and all the guys behind the scenes that have always put the effort in and always answered the phone calls when I need help and, uh, you know, guys in Perth, Glenn and, you know, Jeff and Jamie and, and then the guys over here, Les Small and Benny Grice for putting up with us at their workshop when we're getting the car ready and, you know, look, there's, there's so many I could uh, thank over the years but, you know, it's, um, they, know, they know who they are so I'm sure they'll be, uh, be proud with what, what we've all done. We hope you've enjoyed all the action here from Sandown Raceway for the QP Lubes Victorian Sports Dance Championship. They head to Phillip Island for Island Magic at the end of November. That was the final round as well for the DEA Performance Sports Dance Championship, the National Sports Dance. They'll be back in 2020. Check out both categories, Facebook pages and websites for more details. Until next time, I'm Daniel Beckinsale. Joining me was Gary O'Brien. Bye for now.